That's right. Uh, details of uh, that presentation of the 2023 appropriation bill for next year, 2023. Let's drill down on the details of it with uh, co-managing partner, commercial partners, uh, Mr. Steve Oshaw, uh, joining us from here in Lagos. Good afternoon, Mr. Oshaw. Happy holiday to you. Thank you so much for sharing this holiday with us. Thank you. Good morning. It's my pleasure to be here. Awesome. So um, let's let's start from well, should I say the top? Of course, this is not our first budget. This is the final one for President Muhammadu Buhari before he leaves office. But let's even look at the rate of implementation, impact, performance of our budgets over the years. I mean, not just talking about this, this administration, but I mean, if we do this administration, I guess it's been seven years, we can actually do that. How, what percentage would you place that? Okay, thank you. Um, I think um, like it's been teamed or termed um, is the budget of um, sustainability and is the last one that this present administration or this present government um, is going to preside over until when they hand over uh, the mantle of leadership in 2023. Um, if you look at the, the um, history of our budget since this government has been in place for the past three years, um, I think the major challenge has actually been in the transmissions of the revenue. Um, the revenue has actually been the challenge for this government. If you look at the number that actually been turned for this year, um, 9.7 trillion is projected for revenue out of the 20.5 trillion. That's circa about 47 billion dollars, um, which shows an increase of about 18 percent from the last year budget of 17.1 uh, thereabouts. Um, so, for me, um, you've seen that slight increase in terms of um, the budget uh, for 2023, and at the same time, we've seen that the revenue projected for this year is likely lower for, uh, than what was projected in 2022. 2022, we had about 10.7 trillion. And if you look at that data from the prorata uh, basis, on prorata basis from where we are today, you would agree with me that we only performed about 45 to 50 percent of that revenue projection in 2022. The same thing in 2021, we had performance of about 70%, roughly 70 percent in terms of revenue projections and the actual um that was actually gotten from revenue um 2021 we projected about 6.64 trillion and actual number for that year was about 4.64 trillion and in 2020 the same thing we had about 5.37 projected in 2020 and we had about 3.42 in terms of revenue which is roughly about 60 uh, to 65 percent of um, actualization so in this budget of 2023 i think the same problem actually exists uh, if you look at the projection, if you look at the presentation by the by the president, I think one, you know, he has both the plus and the minus. So the plus for me, um, I think we can see that uh, the government is aspiring to get about 3.75 projections in terms of GDP, which um, is slightly higher than the uh, population growth, which is around 2.4 percent, as at the last statistic released by MBS. And um, I can see there that the president was actually acknowledged the fact that it's not going to be business as usual, and it's becoming more and more difficult for Ni for Nigerian government to actually fund, you know, university. So we threw another debate up, you know, into how this is going to, you know, happen going forward, considering the fact that we had seven months of strike by um, ASU. Then again, if you look at the budget again, the subsidy is um, is still hanging in the balance somehow somewhere which they're saying they're going to kick down the road, uh, oh, sorry, remove by 2023, but we don't know how that will be done. And um, the deficits, I think that's another thing we have to look at, because if you look at the revenue of 9.7 trillion, we have a de deficit of 11 trillion. And if you look at the entire expenditure of 20.51 trillion, um, if you take about 6.3, it's about 6.3 trillion out of that number, which is going to be, you know, uh, through interest payment or debt servicing, it means that the actual number that is going to go to expenditure or to, you know, capital projects and recurrent expenditure that's always happening in the budget is roughly about 14 trillion naira. Um, and if you take that out from the deficits that we have, it means that quite a lot of money is going to be raised from the capital market.
Mm. Well, uh, capital markets, uh, well, that, I think that's another development. But uh, before we delve into those uh, uh, details, I would like to know from your perspective, because an average Nigerian watching this program would ask, okay, so the president comes, reels out numbers, you know, the place subsidy at this and, and place the Naira at this and projects that we're going to have a revenue at this level and GDP at this level. How does it concern me? Well, so it concerns you because some of those statistics you see that are economic macroeconomic data that if it's actually well planned will affect um, a lot of things that actually impact the citizens. Uh, we're talking about amounts that government is going to spend on infrastructure, which means that infrastructure is going to develop, you know, and you're going to have an improved system. So which means that it's going to affect the citizens. We're talking about how much is going to be deployed into some other projects, you know, um, whether it's power, energy, um, road infrastructure, water, water um, um, development and all of that, which means that these have a direct impact on the government. And we're talking about actually projecting the economy to actually move at 3.75 GDP, which means that it can urbanize the economy that the total productions of the entire uh, population of the country is actually improved, you know, which is why I mentioned the, uh, the fact that if you are projecting about 3.75 for 2023, which is higher than you know the population growth in 2023, sorry, in 2022, uh, it means it's actually good for the economy, which means that Nigerian or uh, the economy is actually producing more uh, considering our size of GDP. So these are the things that directly impact the citizens, and these are why, and that's the reason why for government and for governance, a lot of things have to go into that calculation. You know, um, the exchange rate, for example, is going to affect, you know, um, you know, importer, you know, business um, or manufacturers, you know, uh, and transmission of all of those mechanisms will affect how the economy is galvanized one way or the other. So those statistics and those parameters are actually being set across are very important and things that government should watch. Inflation, for example, we know is a thief of, you know, of, 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 of income. So which means that if we are able to tame inflation from this present level, we've seen 17 year high at 20, over 20%, 20 and um, the projection is around 17% for 2023. If we are able to actually tame that, and actually bring the interest, uh, the inflation rate lower, it means that, you know, you can save more, actually earn more in terms of income. So these numbers are very important. They are macro macroeconomic data that the government have to look at. And it means that in transmission of the budget projected for 2023 and beyond, we have to look at how we can put all these parameters together to, you know, uh, move the economy forward. Yeah, well, I, I guess the citizens will be asking that because this year we also had uh, some funds allocated for infrastructure. And if we were to ask, where are those infrastructures? Um, where, where is the power, for instance? We, we've talked about the national grid collapse, I think, seven or eight times already this year. So I, I guess the reality of it is what the citizens are asking, and that is what they're asking for them to be able to connect you know, and be concerned when we hear this number. So it goes beyond being numbers to becoming a reality. If this amount of money is, is to fund infrastructure, what infrastructure should I be looking at at the end of 2023? Should I say, for instance, the Lagos Ibadan Expressway would have been completed? And I will know, oh, that fund that was allocated in the 2023 budget was used for this. So when the president or the next president is talking the next time and saying, oh, infrastructure is going to have five trillion naira and it's going to be used for this i'll be like yes you know and, and i'm following i guess those are kind of the realities that nigerians want to see and and connect with so i think you're quite spot on on your analysis there so just to give you a background on that your know, nigerians wants to see you know the fruits of democracy and the fruits of those democracies are those things that the government have put in place of actually promise that are going to deliver so if you promise infrastructure we have to see that infrastructure we've seen a bit of improvement in rail infrastructure but security is still a problem we've seen a bit of improvement in terms of the road infrastructure but we still have so much um, actually to do in that area. So I think you are spot on. The problem for Nigerian government over the years has actually been the implemented implementation of the promises and actually the and numbers of those things actually been put on the, on, on, on the budget. The assumption is that you assume that you have um, the revenue 
to be able to drive that. So the bane of Nigerian government is actually the drive of revenue. So if you see constantly, you are having recurring expenditure that you are using the revenue that is actually being short to finance. So it will be a problem. So there will be a gap. And if you look at the way Nigerian budget has actually been uh, performing for the past three or four or five years, you agree with me that even CAPEX has actually been over underperforming, underwhelming. Because if you look at it, 70% for this year is already been, is just what is achieved on CAPEX. But when you look at the recurrent expenditure, we've been going above you know, um, the projected amount, which is over 100%. And what is the recurrent expenditure, which is going to, you know, personnel costs and all of that, you know, paying salaries and stuff like that. So that is where the problem, and that is the reason why we're not seeing, you know, the effect and implementation of some of those infrastructural projects that government needs to actually do. Power, for example, you've seen that, uh, you know, epileptic supply in power electricity for the past few years, and we've seen that promises that the government is trying to put, push a lot of money into that sector. So we need, you know, deliberate effort from the government, and we need the conscious effort to be able to reduce the cost on governance. So we have a combination of both structural and, you know, governance issue that we, ha we have to look at here. So in terms of what I heard of personnel, in terms of, you know, representative of some of those, uh, uh, the, you know, government agencies and, um, you know, MDAs like that. So we need to look at all of this and how to cut down expenses. If you do that, we'll be able to save a lot of money. And if we increase the revenue by, you know, expanding the, tra the tax net, you know, and at the same time looking for other other areas apart from oil sectors. Noise oil sectors have not been, you know, fully developed in Nigeria, have not been fully tapped into. You have to create that enabling environment to be able to, you know, allow those non-oil receipts to actually give us more revenue as a, as, as a nation. And once that is done, you will see that the dependence of reliance on oil which is actually, you know, um, from, from the figure we've seen this year, is actually short of the target that the government has put in place, will give us the leverage and the power to be able to perform and deliver on all those promises on infrastructure. Yeah, so one of the things you said there really caught my attention, and I think the president did mention it, the issue of cutting the cost of governance. Uh, and one of the conversations that have been going on is why can't those MDAs, um, that generates revenue, why can't they take care of their expenses, maybe as a way of cutting costs? So at least those personnel, personnel expenses and everything that you talked about would be reduced. Do you see this as workable? So, you know, when I was explaining earlier, I, I was talking about, you know, the structural problem is a plethora of structural and governance problem that we have to look at and we'll find a way to solve. Okay, you just mentioned there some of the MDAs and GOEs that, you know, we need to strip and see how much these people can actually generate and reduce the cost so that we don't have multiplicity of or duplication of you know functions of some of these things uh some of these uh ministries so and, and i think when we do that we'll be able to save a lot of cost and a lot of money in that area and i think from the 2023 project um if it's happening right i think there's a there's a recommendation to actually strip about 10 of the GOEs um out of the over 60 over 68 GOEs we have and if that is fully implemented it's a test case scenario to see how they will perform in 2023. If that case scenario actually works well in 2023, it means that we are going to have a lot of saving coming from these ministries and government parastatus, and we are going to have the efficiency of that government, of that uh, ministries being, you know, generally driven to give results. Mm. But uh, seeing that a major part of this budget, the 2023 budget, would have to be implemented by another administration, which, you know, could be an APC, and then we hope there will be continuity, but could also be an opposition, you know, which may mean that the, the, the opposition party may not have the same vision that this administration is proposing. So, uh, those proposals now, is there anything that can assure Nigerians that it doesn't matter who comes in, this implementation, the implementation, because that's why we're talking about the issue of implementation of the budget. Sometimes we have them there as the letters, and they're great ideas with the potential of great results, but we don't see those results because somewhere along the line implementation because this budget will largely be implemented by another administration how we sure how can we assure that these suggestions that sound laudable 
would be implemented for that result? So, so just to answer your question directly, we're not sure of anything. <laughs> what we're sure of is that there's going to be transition from power from this government to another government in 20, come 2023. Um, whether this new government is going to implement fully the same budget that actually been pushed forward by this government is what we are not sure of. But one thing that is that is constant that we know, and all the major contestants um, this time around from different parties, whether it's APC, PDP, Labour Party, NCP, or whatever party that it is, they understand that Nigeria is in a very precarious situation when it comes to the economy, and it's something we have to fix. So, which means that it's not going to be business as usual in 2023, considering the state of the nation. And which means that whoever wants to be the president, whether they align with the budget being presented by this APC government or not, might have to do even much more to be able to, you know, give that dividend of democracy to a lot of Nigerians. That's number one. Number two, it means that we have to look at some other areas where we can improve the efficiency in our budgeting going forward, which is very important because that is going to determine a lot of things. And we have to look at the structural foundation of some of these, you know, um, the other arms of government, whether it's state, you know, federal and local government. So it's a lot of work that's going to be done. Whether they are going to do it effectively, we're not sure of that. But like I said, I think one thing is sure that we're going to have a transfer of power from now, uh, in 20, from, 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 from 2023, May 2023, I believe we're going to have a new regime, whether it's from APC, PDP, or Labour, or any other party, we're going to have that. But I think, whether they are going to implement what this budget, um, what this government has in their budget for 2023, uh, we're not sure of that. But I'm sure that a lot of them are aware that it's not business as usual and they must be ready because it's not going to be an Eldorado in 2023. All right, uh, Mr. Steve Oshaw, we do wish there was a way we could assure and be sure that once we have an agreed budget that it will be implemented. But uh, I guess some things we just have to hope and pray. Thank you so much for your time and uh, this holiday. Enjoy the rest of the holiday. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. I guess uh, this conversation obviously is one that will continue in the, uh, the coming days. But uh, away from that now, have you ever thought of an insurance as an instrument for financial freedom? Or is it just a way to save? Well, find out what uh, are the details of both and then you decide for yourself which parts you want to choose. But that's after the break here on Business Morning on Channels Television.